So we've been talking about all the work I do. There's a story about h- how it happens. W- you know, where do ideas come from? And that's an interesting story. Where yeah. do ideas come from? So uh, I had mentioned Van Iver Bush, and uh, he wrote a really influential thing called The Endless Frontier. So uh, science won World War II. The, 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 the more known story is nuclear bombs. The less well-known story is the Rad Lab. So at, at MIT, an amazing group of people invented radar, which is really credited as winning the war. So after the war, a uh, grand old man from MIT and it's, um, uh, was charged with science won the war, how do we maintain that edge? And the report he wrote led to the National Science Foundation and the modern notion we take for granted but didn't really exist before then of public funding of research, of research agencies. Mm -hmm. Um, In it, he made, again, what I consider an important mistake, which is he described basic research leads to Applied research leads to applications, leads to commercialization, leads to impact. Mm -hmm. And so we need to invest in that pipeline. Um, The reason I consider it a mistake is almost all of the examples we've been talking about in my lab went backwards, that the basic research came from applications. Mm -hmm. And further, almost all of the examples we've been talking about came fundamentally from mistakes. So <laughs> yeah. e- essentially everything I've ever worked on has failed, mm-hmm. but in failing something better happened. So uh, the way I like to describe it is you know, ready, aim, fire is you do your homework, mm-hmm. um, you aim carefully at Something a target you want to accomplish, and if everything goes right, you then hit the target and succeed. Mm-hmm. Um, what I do, you can think of as ready, fire, aim. So you you do a lot of work to get ready. Um, then you close your eyes, and you don't really think about where you're aiming, but you look very carefully at where you did aim. Where you, um, you aim after you fire, <laughs> and the the reason that's but, so important okay. is. If you do ready, aim, fire, There's the best you can hope is hit what you aim at. So let me give you some examples, because uh, uh, th- this is a source of great- You're full of good lines today. Yeah. <laughs> source of great frustration. So I mentioned the early quantum computing. So quantum computing is this power of using quantum mechanics to make computers that for some problems are dramatically more powerful than classical computers. Before it started, there was a really interesting group of people who knew a lot about um, physics and computing that were inventing what became quantum computing before it was clear anything, there was an opportunity there. It was just studying how those relate. Here's how it fits to the ready, fire, aim. In the, I was doing really short-term work in my lab on shoplifting tags. Mm-hmm. On, this was really before there was modern RFID and so how you put tags in objects to sense them, mm-hmm. something we just take for granted commercially. And there was a problem of how you can sense multiple objects at the same time. And so I was studying how you can remotely sense materials to make low-cost tags that could let you distinguish multiple objects simultaneously. Mm-hmm. To do that, you need nonlinearity so that the signal is modulated and so I was looking for material sources of nonlinearity, and that led me to s- look at how um, nuclear spins interact, mm-hmm. just just uh, for for um, spin resonance, this is the sort of things you use when you like go in an MRI machine. And so I was studying how to use that, and it turns out that it was a bad idea. You couldn't remotely use it for um, shoplifting tags but I realized you could compute. And so um, with a group at, of colleagues thinking about early quantum computing, like David DiVincenzo and Charlie Bennett was articulating what are the properties you need to compute and then looking at how to make the tags. It turns out the tags were a terrible idea for um, sensing objects in a supermarket checkout, but 
I realized they were computing. So with Ike Chuang and a few other people, we realized we could program nuclear spins to compute. And so that's what we use to do Grover's search algorithm. And then it was used for a Shor's factoring algorithm. And it worked out. Um, the systems we did it in, nuclear magnetic resonance, don't scale beyond a few qubits. Mm -hmm. But the techniques have lived on. And so you know, all the current quantum computing techniques grew out of the ways we would talk to these spins. But I I'm telling this whole story because it, it came from a bad way to make a shoplifting tag. Starting with an application, mistakes led to the fundamental science. Fundamental science. Yeah. I mean, can you and, can you just link on that? I mean, just just, just the, using nuclear spins to do com computation and that like, what gave you the guts to try to think through this the, for, from a fabric from a digital fabrication perspective, actually, how to leap from one to the other? Yeah, I wouldn't call it guts. I would call it collaboration. So, I, ah. so at IBM, there was this amazing group of like I mentioned Charlie Bennett and David DiVincenzo and Ralph Landau and Nabil Amir, and these were all gods of thinking about physics and computing. So ah. I, 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 I yelled at the whole computer industry being based on uh, a fiction, Metropolis, you know, programmers frolicking in the garden while somebody moves levers in the basement. Mm -hmm. There's a complete parallel history of um, uh, Maxwell to Boltzmann to Zillard to um, Landauer to Bennett. And most people won't know most of these names, but this whole parallel history thinking deeply about how computation and physics relate. So, um, I was collaborating with that whole group of people. And then you know, at, at MIT, I was in this high traffic environment. I wasn't deeply inspired to think about better ways to detect shoplifting tags, but you know, stumbled across companies that needed help with that and was thinking about it. And then I realized those two worlds intersected and we could use the failed approach for the shoplifting tags to make um, early um, quantum computing algorithms.